Hello fam ladies, Pastor Gideon and this is Kingdom Matters. It's Reverend Eastwood shattering Christianity. We are sitting there that we are born again. Born what? You are not even born before you will be born again. If confessing Jesus, but living carelessly and foolishness, and foolishly, is what will take people to heaven. But Muslims, in spite of their diligence, we say they will go to hell. I will say God is not fair. And I've also seen a lot of Christians react to it, but the part that worries me a lot is that many more Muslims are happily sharing it and they are excited about this video more than Christians are. So let's take a look at it. And see the Christians who pretend there's nothing like a church building. Go and stand inside the mosque and say there's nothing like a religious building. Well, like I raise Allah. I've been the Anyika. You know, there is some kind of nonsense which is spoken only about churches and in church. There are things nobody dare do them in a mosque. Mandela, you see church, if we were kneeling down, bowing down, kneeling down, bowing down, washing ourselves before we enter church, many people will stop church. What kind of church is this? I can't go through all this punishment. Remove my shoes, wash my feet, clean myself. Why? They'll tell you it's unnecessary. The Muslim will do all that and then enter the church. Or the mosque and they are not sitting on a chair i don't know whether these days they started sitting on chair mat bag they sit on the mask the the, the mat Allahu akbar, Allahu akbar. and when they mention the name of muhammad they add some sacred words to it when they refer to their imam it's with maximum respect go to them and learn and remove and quasi assemble from your brain. Go to them and learn. I scarcely see them take a piece of paper and insult their leaders. We are sitting there that we are born again. Born what? You are not even born before you'll be born again. A spirit has on them. The meetings are too many. The Muslim, every day they go to the mosque. Not once a week ago. Every day, and they go how many times? Five times. You say you are going to heaven. Hell cry, you won't qualify to go. Some of you, when you die, that is all. Even hell, God will send you there. You will not exist again. Oh, and you see, the meetings are too many. And the prayers are too many. And others are praying five times a day. Every day at 12 o'clock, they will be at the mosque. Every day, businessmen, rich people, you with your poverty. The Muslims are the people you see, rich man, contractor. He will park his car and go and kneel down and bow down with common members, commoners. And I don't think they also enter the mosque with their shoe. Am I preaching? Why are you not clapping? We are saved by grace. But I'm telling you, if confessing Jesus, but living carelessly and foolishness, and foolishly, is what will take people to heaven. But Muslims, in spite of their diligence, we say they'll go to hell. I will say God is not fair. Why would careless people like us who are not serious? The only thing we did is stand here and say, Lord Jesus, I receive you as my personal Lord and Savior. And that is all. We are going to heaven. And somebody else who is so diligent and applies themselves to their religion with all committed commitment they would rather die and you say they are going to hell keep fooling yourself keep, keep, keep fooling yourself hey Mandela you see the way you cross your leg don't change it too but I'm telling you in the mosque you can't do this why are you not clapping Everybody has released their leg. Now. <laughs> Am I teaching you anything at all? If you want to become a good Christian, eh, one day, just beg the Imam to allow you to go to the mosque for one week. You will change. No, no, no. Listen. When you go there, eh, one week, just follow a serious Muslim who will put away all their nice dresses. And just wear white zalabia. 
I'm not teaching you anything at all. I really wish I wasn't going to do this video because of the reverence I have for Reverend Isfu, but it must be done anyway. It is a hard video to make, but our honor for the Lord Jesus Christ and his word must be above whatever we have for any man. Three main reasons why I am addressing this matter in Kingdom Matters is that in this short message where Reverend Isfu is seen preaching, he went against essential doctrines of Christianity. He seems to be kicking against salvation by grace through faith and he says it is unjust. Now that is actually him questioning the ways of God. Secondly, although he was speaking to believers in the church, he has given allowance for Muslims to jubilate in their errors thinking they are right. Now such confidence and hope for other faiths I don't think is right for a believer to give. See their comments. I want you to see the comments. Abdul Jaba Ishak, Alhamdulillah, Rabil Alami, may Allah shower his blessings upon you and your family and thank you for the compliment and the entire Muslim Ummah appreciate you. See Su Suleiman, Masha Allah, Man Sule, Allah is great. Then Evans come, then Saku Sisi, Allah Wakba, Salam Haruna, Alam, Alhamdulillah, Ibrahim Hussein, Masha Allah, Salifu. Great Zulman Allah, some good teacher, Sayyid Muhammad, truth, Suala Abdul Wahab, Allah Wakbar. So basically, if you check, you have Muslims excited and happy to hear these things from the clergy and to share them. And they've shared it widely. In fact, I got to see this video from a Muslim sharing it to my timeline. Think about it. Now, imagine you having a relative whom you are preaching to to receive the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. When they chance on a video like this, what is going to become of their faith? Your work will be many more times harder because of a video like this because they see here a reverend minister of the gospel in our country salute Islam and applaud Muslims and then chastise Christians. And then they are going to tell you, being a muslim is better than being a christian so what can you say to them again and now here are they with an evidence from a revered minister telling you that being a muslim and be islam is better than christianity especially in the way we behave and the last reason is that it is setting a big wrong example for younger generations who take everything from a minister of god and share it we need to address it because if we don't, many people are going to go on and be repeating the same thing and it is going to become the order of the day. So it must be halted even now. Let's take them one by one. Now for him to say Muslim, in spite of their diligence, if they go to hell and we careless Christians make it to heaven, means that God is not fair is a very, very big problem. That is like a slap in the face of God. To be able to say God is not fair is to assume to be wiser than God or to be wiser in that situation for God to know what he should have done instead of what he is doing and that you know better. That is a big slap in the face of God and it is one of the main reasons why we are addressing this. It is a clear flouting of the ways of God for salvation. What you are saying is that you don't agree with God in the way he has chosen to save human beings. When the Bible is clearly stated many times, time and time again, that salvation is not according to works, you say these people are diligent and so because of that they deserve to be saved. No. You know clearly that salvation is not according to works. So why do you flout this? Why do you go against it and make it seem like God is unfair by this decision? Are you wiser than God? Are we wiser than God? Now, let's put that aside. Imagine if God chooses works as a means of saving people. Let me ask you a question. Will any Muslim be saved? They have a zeal for God, but like Apostle Paul said, it is not according to knowledge. And their self-righteousness or their righteousness by themselves will ever fail before God. The righteousness of a man is like a filthy rag before God. No one can merit God's salvation. I believe Reverend Isu knows this very much. For me, having listened to him for some time and having been around Christian circles, I think it is just a case of sensational preaching and appealing to the emotions of people. That's my honest opinion. You see, there's this kind of preaching in the African church where 
you want to say things that will trigger people that will cause a response from people that is not the conventional thing on the ground you understand this is the kind of preaching that dominates the african space of the gospel and you can see it when he said why are you not clapping in other words he was actually expecting that they'll be intrigued by that message and then they will clap see if we are really sharing the truth of the gospel we don't need anyone to clap for us if we are preaching the truth you don't need anyone clapping as a response to your message clapping should not be a thing the minister of god should be looking forward to whilst preaching it, these are the kind of things that has given rise to mindless rhyming in messages in churches that get people excited but if you check them critically they have no spiritual importance or relevance at all example your life is tight because you don't tight if you don't offer you will suffer this they are rhymes but spiritually if you check them in the light of the gospel they don't make sense but then because they excite emotion they appeal to the emotions of people and they are sensational in nature a lot of ministers will rather choose to subscribe to that and so the aim of preaching in this context is that by the time i am done the people should be excited the people should be intrigued it shouldn't be like that. Now, if we are to critically analyze our preacher's messages today and to transcribe them, in this case, we are looking at Reverend Institute, but it can be done for any man of God. Like what was done for Watchman Nee. Watchman Nee died, but then his preachings were written down, they were transcribed, and then they were put in books forms. Now, if we are to do the same thing for our ministers of God today, we are going to have a lot of problem because so many truths are flouted in almost every sentence. Whilst they are talking about faith, they lose touch of love. They lose touch of other truths in the Bible. Meanwhile, the truth of God is systematic. Everything is holistic. You don't flout one in order to promote another. Everything is supposed to flow into each other and make sense holistically. But that is not what we find in emotional appeal or sensational messages. So as a young minister, this is where you need to pay attention to your messages. And I pray that even the older generation ministers, they must critically sit down and look at their message. Because see, having done this with our Bible school, I can tell you, we sat down listening to messages and then seeing whether... Every line makes spiritual sense and biblical sense. I cannot tell you the number of errors that we got it. For example, you see in this short clip, he said, some believers will cease to exist because they won't even go to hell. You say you are going to heaven. Hell, cry, you won't qualify to go. Some of you, when you die, that's all. Even hell, God will send you there. You will not exist again. Now that is not just a statement. That is annihilationism in theology. It is a concept. And I don't think Reverend Eastwood actually believes or subscribes to that. It means that some people will cease to exist after death. But he made those statements anyway. That's just some seven-day Adventist false theology right there. Let's move to the next thing. We will one day look at all this thing in detail because this channel exists for that. Now let's talk about how Muslims are happily sharing the message and being glad they are Muslims and that they are better than Christian. Is that a hope Christ, a Christian preacher must give to Muslims? Now, if you know the Bible, you know that being pious and diligent in all your ways, although good, cannot acquire for anyone eternal salvation. And that is the bane of Christianity. No matter how good a person is, he cannot afford, he cannot acquire, he cannot buy eternal salvation. A preacher who says it is not fair for Muslims who are diligent to go to hell clearly doesn't know the problem of man and the approach of God to redeem man. Or he's just being sentimental. If he knows it, he's just being sentimental. Man's problem is not just good behavior. The man cannot behave well. You can train man to behave well. Man's real problem is sin and death. In their spirit, they are dead and they are sin. And that nature cannot relate with God. That nature is alienated from God. Now, the best of men is like a spoiled egg that has been sprayed with perfume on the outside. It smells nice, but at the core, every one of us is rotten and smelly without the salvation of the Lord Jesus Christ. Men don't just see it, but that is who we are in essence. That is what we are in the spirit. That's what we are practically. It is... Men 
just don't see it but that is who we are all of us we smell on the inside without jesus christ you see men who are disciplined and live well are like the shell of an egg that prevents you from knowing and smelling how rotten they are but at the core no diligent no disciplined man is good for anything that is what the gospel teaches they are like filthy rags before god all of us without christ are utterly useless utterly helpless utterly rotten that is who we all are and so if you are rotten what is the point of diligence and discipline what you need is regeneration is for you to be totally changed at their core then it will reflect on the outside but modifying your behavior and living well being disciplined doesn't mean anything it doesn't go anywhere now if you want to study this further you can check cornelius in acts chapter 10. the bible described him as a vow devout man one that feared god with all his house he didn't just fear god he made sure that all his house feared god he was a philanthropist a very prayerful fellow yet he needed jesus to be saved so don't give muslims hope that if they are good they will make heaven what about cornelius the muslims are like the jews who fast twice a week and, and give arms of all they have to the poor yes they have a zeal for god they want to love god but what they are doing is not according to knowledge biblically and if you have a brother or sister like that we must encourage all of them to believe in jesus christ for their sins to be taken away if not remember what i said like the egg covered by the shell on the outside but on the inside they are deeply deeply rotten the other wrong thing is for him to say christians should go and learn from muslims that is very bad that is not 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 how can he simply say that i don't get it now hopefully in my next video i'll be sharing five to seven examples a preacher must never use in their sermons one of them is this to use muslims and islam to spite christians or believers in fact if not you doing an apologetic message or talking to a muslim to convert them or having a debate with a muslim there is no way you must cite them in your messages if it is in their favor listen if whatever you say in your message is in their favor they will carry it and use it to convince their baby and susceptible in their faith unstable people will be convinced with this message because they will say your preachers even believe that we are better now why do you think they are all over in the comment section liking and saying these things they are leveraging on reverend issues personality as a confirmation to their faith and you will never know how many undecided people will be affected by just this small part of the video that they are sharing they are using it to talk to a lot of people now secondly why you shouldn't cite islam and muslims in your messages if what reverend eastwood said was unpalatable to islam it was not good to them trust me by now they would have been on his neck to apologize have you forgotten what happened to archbishop duncan williams so if you are not ready for a back and forth with them and you are not ready to share a message with them a strong message with them that you are able to stand by don't mention them at all it is not worth it so for a young preacher listening learn from this video don't mention them to praise them it is wrong it will be used to evangelize to other young and unstable believers and also if you criticize them get ready for war they are going to come for you so don't if you don't want war you don't want to meddle in anything just stay in your lane and don't be involved in that but if you are ready for it you can go ahead now if you need an example to encourage believers Listen, there are so many examples. You can use other believers who are living in this contemporary time. You can use Bible characters. You can use the Lord Jesus Christ. He's the epitome. You can use the apostles of the Lord Jesus Christ. You can use the church fathers. Muslim and Islam has no place in these things. And they, has, they have nothing to teach us. Do you understand it? And finally, as a young preacher, please learn what to listen and what to take from the fathers make sure you are not insulting them make sure you are not antagonistic love them honor them but then it's a sign of maturity to be able to distinguish between truth and what it's not the bible says that henceforth will be no more children tossed about to and fro by every wind of doctrine so when we grow we don't just subscribe to anything a great man of god tells us and this is one classical example 
Don't just swallow everything. From today, when you listen to messages, take what aligns with the word of God. And the ones that go contrary to our faith, make sure you put it somewhere. God bless you. I'll see you in the next one. Shalom.